Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Racestar Style F46S all-in-one flight controller. This is basically an updated version of the Racestar Style F4S which I've previously reviewed and the main differences between this version and the previous one are that first of all now it supports up to 6S lab batteries just like its name implies, black box has been added and the built-in 4-in-1 BLLES ESC has been upgraded to 40 amperes versus 30 amperes on the previous version. In terms of packaging, inside its small box, along with the all-in-one flight controller, you can find the wiring diagram, a 35 volts 470 microfarad capacitor, and a bag that contains M3 spaces and screws, and 16 AWG battery leads. The weight of this all-in-one flight controller is 16.9 grams, so it's not going to be much lighter than a similar combination of 4-in-1 ESC and flight controller. However, it will have a much smaller form factor and its outer dimensions are 43.1 by 50.4 by 5.3 mm. Out of the box, the flight controller can pre-flashed with Betaflight 4.05 and it's running Lux F4 OSD firmware. I'm going to include the dump file in the description box down below, so in case you are going to mess some of the settings, you can simply restore them. Now let's go over the features of this board and its layout. First of all, if it wasn't clear, it features 30.5 by 30.5 M3 mounting holes. On the back side of the flight controller, you can find pretty big pads for the battery, which can be found also on its bottom side. You can also find four holes, which are used for soldering the capacitor. So you can simply insert the capacitor like that, or if you'd like using the bigger holes, and then simply solder it to the battery pads. Just like the battery pads, the motor pads can be found also on the bottom side of the all-in-one flight controller, and it's using the classical Betaflight motor layout. So over here, you're going to solder motor one, over here, motor two, motor three, and motor four. On the front side of the flight controller, you can find a micro USB port, next to it a physical boot button, and on its left side, pads for connecting your FPV camera, video transmitter, and also receiver. These pads can be found also on the bottom side, so it's pretty convenient. The FPV camera is going to be soldered to these three pads, so over here you can find ground, 5 volts, and then the video in, which is mislabeled as video out. Next to it you can find ground and video out pads for the VTX and next to it also plus 5 volts and if you will need to power your VTX using a higher voltage you will need to power it using the plus pad of the battery. In case you are using an SBUS receiver you will need to solder it to these three pads over here. So this is the ground, this is the SBUS signal in and this is plus 5 volts. The flight controller is already pre-configured to work with SBUS and this SBUS signal over here is linked to UART1. In addition, over here you can find plus and minus pads for a buzzer, ground, LED and RSSI pads and on the other sides you can find ground and 3.3 volts for powering a spectrum receiver and next to them RX6 and TX6 pads. Now even though on the flight controller itself you can only find UART1 and UART6 pads, it actually supports three UART ports. In order to use UART3, you will need to head over to the CLI tab of Betaflight and type resource in order to see all the available resources and the pin that they are mapped to. As far as I know, the only resource that you will be able to map is the LED1 pad which is located over here. So what you need to do is to locate it on the resource list and as you can see it is mapped to B05. Now I'm going to remap it to stereo TX3 and then for example you'll be able to use it for controlling the smart audio feature of your VTX. So first of all I'm going to free resource LED1 by typing resource LED1 and then type none press enter and now I'm going to resource serial TX3 to B05 which was previously linked with the LED1 pad so now I'm going to type this value and then type B05 press enter type save in order to save the settings and now you'll be able to use the LED pad 
as a TX repad, but just keep in mind that in case you are going to update the firmware of the flight controller, these settings are not going to be saved, so you'll need to repeat the same procedure, and it's recommended to back up the resource list in case you make any changes, including changing the orientation of the motors. Regarding the motor layout, I don't recommend to mount the flight controller as it is meant to, because then the micro USB port is going to be blocked and it's going to be a major issue. So what I recommend you to do is to either mount it when the micro USB port is facing the left side on the right side, and then you will need to resource the motors to match the new positions. And I have a guide that shows how it's done, so you can check it out over here. Just note that instead of typing resource list in order to get the list of resource, you will need to only type resource and press enter. I think that it's great that the Racer Star Style F46S flight controller features a pretty small form factor, so it allows you to change its orientation as on the Asgard all-in-one F7 flight controller, which I've previously featured in a build video, it's impossible to do it, and then accessing the micro USB port is hard and will require you to disassemble the quadcopter. So overall, if you're looking for a flight controller that features an integrated 4-in-1 ESC, priced at around $60, I think that the Racerstar style F46S will give you a good value for money, just keep in mind that in case you are going to burn one of the ESCs or you are going to break the micro USB port, it's going to make this flight controller pretty much useless. But again, priced at $60, I think that it's not that bad. And if you're looking for a budget-friendly component for your tight build, I think that you should definitely check it out. Regarding the micro USB port, I recommend to protect it because on the Racer Star style FOS, I broke it and I recommend to add extra protection and maybe use some rubber on top of it, so in case of a crash, it's going to be less likely to break. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.